The Ultimate Beauty Show is all about being open and honest with your health and beauty issues. Today I've got two of the UK's leading experts around two different areas. I've got uh, Dr. Jag Chana and Dr. Rika Taylor. Thank you very much for coming in. I'm going to start with you, Rika. Now, obviously in the guide you have written an article about fat freezing, which sounds pretty amazing. So can you just tell us a little bit about what this technology is? Okay. Um the technology, this particular technology, is called cool sculpting. It's a, a quite an unusual technology, originally developed by Harvard scientists um, when they noticed that children who um, were sucking a lot of ice lollies, no, they noticed that uh, they were developing fat loss in their cheeks, so they were developing dimples, and they then harnessed this um, idea and developed this machine. So basically, the, the machine is very good for treating um, people who are within two stones of their ideal weight um, and have got pockets of pinchable soft fat. Um, and, and the machine has an applicator which um, sucks up pockets of fat and puts, uh, the fat is then between two cooling plates and the, the fat cells get frozen. So it's not, it's not a weight loss treatment at all? It's not a weight loss treatment. No, so it's really just targeting those fatty deposits. Yes. Um, we did have a question on uh, social media from, um, uh, from Tim and he was saying that can this treatment be used for, for, for a man? Is it, is it possible? Yes, it's, it's suitable for uh, men and women and all races. Great. It's just a bit more painful for men usually. It's, uh, <laughs> would, would, you would you agree, uh, to Mr. Chana? <laughs> well, often the pain threshold can vary slightly between male and female yep. uh, patient. Um, one often finds that uh, men are just a little bit more sensitive. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm a wimp myself. What, in, in terms of how many sessions would someone need to come in? You can have as little as one session, um, and one session would, uh, would kill. Uh, will give a 25 to 40 percent improvement of, uh, of, of, the, of the area. But obviously if you want a, more of an improvement you can stack treatments so you can have more treatments in the same area. Because that's, that's quite amazing because I've seen you know in terms of a lot of other sort of treatments like radio frequency and ultrasound you need to have quite a number of series yeah. of treatments and it does yeah. get quite expensive I yeah. think for um, for people that are wanting you know yeah. to, to think about having cosmetic treatments. Yeah. So this sounds like a a, a good option. Um, I've got another question from Jane Smith from Leeds and she says how many uh, treatments would I need to have to see results if I was sort of targeting areas around the thigh? Area? Even one treatment, Just, see, yeah. even one treatment but if you want a more uh, wow result then you could have more than one treatment in the same area. I mean I think mm. in terms of the ultimate beauty I think one of the things we were trying to get across is <laughs> having experts like yourself that are doing safe treatments. I think yeah. you know, consumers are really worried about that. The, the safety thing is really important because obviously if there isn't a safety mechanism to monitor skin temperature, then it can cause damage to the skin. And this particular machine has a, a, a mechanism on it to detect the temperature of the skin. It's called freeze detect. Okay, oh fantastic. Well, so. it, sounds, it sounds amazing. I'll have to try it at some point. <laughs> yeah, no, I will, I will. So uh, over to you, Mr. Chan. You, you're obviously doing something different. You're uh, a plastic uh, reconstructive and cosmetic surgeon. That's correct. And in the guide, what you've covered is um, around facelifts. That's correct. About aging and about how sort of facelifts c can be a, a fantastic solution. Can you just tell us a little bit of, uh, more sort of about what you sort of focused on in the article? Well, basically, facelift surgery uh, encompasses a multitude of techniques and uh, it's really about individualizing the procedure to actually suit each individual patient that comes to see you and uh, it's not just one operation that, I, that would uh, suit every, every particular person and uh, if you actually read about these kinds of procedures on the internet or in the media there are so many different types of nomenclatures and different types of procedures and it For can sure. be really confusing. I think the most important factor is to see an experienced surgeon and they will just address those factors 
that are of a concern to you as an individual and then choose the right technique. I mean I always thought with uh, a facelift procedure it's, it's for more targeted towards maybe women or men in their sort of late 50s and 60s. Is, is this true or is, there, is, it, is it for younger people? Well, facelift surgery can be addressed even from 40s onwards okay. uh, and we're seeing a rapid rise in mini facelift procedures for example. I think there's a huge generation of patients coming through now that have been very used to non-surgical treatments and are reaching the age in their 40s and 50s where they're finding that actually you know, these non-surgical treatments aren't just providing, you know, aren't providing the improvement that they would hope for. And so they're turning to, to surgery uh, to see what's the next step in terms of their facial uh, rejuvenation. And, and do you combine sort of non-surgical treatments with, with a surgical treatment? So if someone has, has you know, lost volume in, in the cheeks, does a facelift correct that or is that just tightening the skin? Is well, it, it's interesting you say that because um, modern thinking about uh, facial ageing does encompass a number of factors. It's not just the skin and soft tissues that become lax with age. Uh, if you actually think about uh, the aged face, there's a, quite a lot of loss of volume. So modern facelift surgery will involve uh, restoring that volume. And we don't often use so much uh, in terms of non-surgical techniques, but uh, I tend to use fat transfer Great. in combination uh, with uh, facelift surgery. So you're using so someone's own fat? Someone's own fat, yeah, okay. absolutely, absolutely. I always like the, like the theory behind that. You take fat from an area you don't want it and then you can re-inject it back into absolutely. places you need absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> so I've got two um, questions here. Uh, one is from um, Melanie Irish from York. She says, are there any certificates or diplomas um, that my doctor, um, that I should, when I'm considering and having a procedure, is there any qualifications that specifically I should be looking for? Well, of course. I mean, I think you should be seeing a fully qualified plastic surgeon. And uh, most surgeons who are fully qualified will have the FRCS PLAST degree and those letters after their name. Uh, but moreover, I think uh, they should belong to the British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons. Uh, it's a body of uh, surgeons in the UK. Uh, and uh, it's the only body, in fact, uh, that audits the safety figures of all their surgeons. So every year uh, these figures are compiled uh, by the association uh, and I think that gives the public some level of security uh, in terms of the fact that they're seeing uh, somebody from, the, from a credible association. Just one last question was, uh, and this is something that I've always been uh, intrigued with, is the, the wind tunnel effect and uh, Alice is, is worried that she said I'm interested in having the procedure done, but am I, is, am I going to have that wind tunnel effect? Well, this is, I get asked this all the time, <laughs> I'm sure. all the time. And I think I often say that you know, if a facelift procedure is carried out incorrectly or uh, the vectors of pull are uh, incorrect, then you can end up having that kind of appearance. Uh, and of course, you know, a patient who looks like they've had a facelift uh, is uh, someone who often is not uh, that attractive because you know the facelift hasn't been carried out appropriately uh, and of course you know the kind of results we're looking for is to uh, achieve a result where a patient looks like they haven't had a facelift it looks very natural. Thank you so much for both of you coming in um, if you want to find out more information about both specialists pick up a copy of the Ultimate Beauty Guide and you can read their articles also you can go onto myfacemybody.com and download uh, your free copy there.